Hello everyone. Today we will get acquainted with the graphical user interface for managing the Stingray Service Gateway platform and take a quick look at all components of the product. For this video tutorial, we need the pre-installed Stingray Service Gateway graphic user interface. Let's take a look at the components of the software. The upper control panel contains buttons for user profile settings, notifications and contact form. Let's start from the right side and move to the left. Click the bug button. Here you can contact us and attach logs to your message. Feel free to submit any bugs that you have found. We will study and fix them. Click the notifications button. These notifications inform us about successful SSH connection, subscriber synchronization, triggering, etc. Click the message button. These messages are loaded from the SSG alert log. You can view and edit your profile in my profile menu. Here you can change all personal details except for the username. Now let's have a look at the user and role management sections. Open the role section. Everything is very simple here. You create a role. Give it a name. For example, you name it, test. On the right side of the screen, you place a check mark for the items that should be available for reading and editing. Click save. Let's open the users section. You create a user. Fill up the profile. Choose a role. Let's choose the role created at the previous stage. Enter your password. The user can change the password later. Click save. Click the name of the current Stingray device at the top of the page and see the pop-up menu. The Restart Fast DPI menu item allows you to completely restart the Fast DPI service on the current equipment. The Update Hot Options menu item allows you to update changes in the DPI configuration for the so-called hot parameters. These are the options that do not require restarting of the Fast DPI service. If you change the Stingray configuration, we recommend you to update the hot parameters and watch the alert log first. The log will indicate which parameters could not be updated. If there are any, then you need to restart the fast DPI service. The device information menu item shows you the main parameters of your Stingray device, such as fast DPI version, architecture, processor model, number of cores and others. In the license information menu item, you can see which fast DPI license is installed on the equipment, its version and validity period. If you need to switch to another Stingray device, choose the required one in the select from the list menu. You can create a list of equipment using managing the list of devices menu item. Let's take a look at the main menu and briefly go through all the sections. The menu consists of six main sections. Please note that the subsection menu is also doubled on the left side of the panel for easier and faster navigation. The first section is DPI control. There are the subsections. Performance. This section opens after you log in by default. Now we see it on the screen. This subsection contains online statistics that shows the current workload of the processors and memory. You can see CPU usage, active processes and memory usage. Statistics tab. Accumulated statistics for the selected period is displayed here. You can also find processors and memory usage statistics here. HTTP requests and blocking statistics are available under the HTTP statistics tab on the right side of the panel. Here you can also find network interfaces traffic statistics. Traffic distribution per class or per grade statistics is available. You can review either defined statistics for each network interface, or general summary statistics for inbound and outbound interfaces. There is also a NAT statistics tab. The top pools section displays general NAT profile workload and separate NAT profile pools workload. The addresses tab on the right side of the panel displays public addresses usage details. Profile name, protocol, address, number of ports used, etc. The full status section consists of three subsections. Full status, with general details of NAT profiles. Detailed status, with detailed information about addresses and ports. And subscriber status, with details of public addresses used by each subscriber. Here you can also use a filter on the top of each column for your convenience. Let's take a look at the configuration subsection. In this subsection, we can set the fast DPI configuration. 
The entire configuration is divided into groups per function. You can switch between the functions using the menu in the left column. You can change the parameters using the forms in the right column. For your convenience, when you switch between sections, you can see the wiki link with the corresponding documentation on the right. If you do not have access to wiki, please contact your distributor. If the format of the forms tab is not convenient for you, there is an editor tab with the ability to show comments and all parameters at the bottom of the page. After making changes, remember to save them. And also remember either to update hot parameters or to restart fast DPI. Let's open the next subsection called Protocol Prioritization. With the help of this section, you can assign priority or class to any protocol. Let's add some protocols as an example. Should it be BitTorrent? We will drop all packets, thus implement full blocking. Add WhatsApp. Let's assign CS3 class to it. And HTTPS. Let's assign CS1 class to it. By default, CSO has the highest priority, the CS7 class has the lowest one. Adding protocol groups can be used to configure prioritization. For example, let's select the IP telephony protocol group. Assign CS4 class to it. Remember to save. For those who do not like forms, it is possible to set priorities using an editor tab. If you need to study the enabled changes log or to discard the changes, you may press the download from history button and choose the backup version you need. Next subsection is called priority for ASN which states for prioritization for autonomous systems. This subsection allows you to configure autonomous systems, assign priority classes to them and perform actions, drop, terminate or skip without processing. Should we switch to a very important subsection called logs? Here you can view and download. The alert logs, for information messages and errors. The statistics logs, for statistics details. The slave logs, for DPI traces. The service logs, for network interfaces status. You can use the search function at the top of the page to search inside the log. This function works with the grep command. For example, let's search the error word. Let's move forward and get back to the main menu. The next big section is services control. The first subsection here is subscribers and services. This section displays a list of all subscribers per IP, their connected services and tariffs details. It is possible to add or delete subscribers, edit their profiles, apply services and tariffs. You can manage authorization status in the panel on the right side of the page. Sending ping, reviewing and editing L2 subscribers properties are available when L2 bras mode is activated. Do not forget to save the changes. Let's see the services subsection. At the moment it is possible to manage the following services. Advertising and ad blocking. Using this tab, you can set the list of banners that need to be replaced or blocked. Black and white lists. Here you can generate black and white lists, configure their profiles and enable these profiles to subscribers. CG NATs You can configure NAT here by creating profiles and assigning them to subscribers and see the status and statistics of translation. With the help of a mini firewall tab, you can configure blocking profiles, enable or exclude the ports and assign these profiles to subscribers. Let's look at the tariff plan subsection. Here you can create policing profiles and flexibly manage the bandwidth. Use one of the forms from simple to advanced or an editor tab. Created profiles can be assigned to subscribers. The next is advertising control subsection. This section helps setting user redirection to a specified resource at a specified time using the HTTP protocol. Let's look through the hotspot subsection. The main aim of this subsection is to manage the Wi-Fi hotspot module which provides the ability to authorize users by cell phone number in public Wi-Fi networks. Here you can specify the server address and set the configuration. When you save the module, it will be installed on the indicated server. All specified settings will be applied. The next big section of the main menu is QoE analytics. All analytical reports based on NetFlow and Clickstream logs are accumulated here. All reports are grouped under sections. The first section is the dashboard. All reports are collected here. 
The set and location of reports can be customized by simple drag and drop. Should we quickly go through QoE analytics subsections on the left? The NetFlow subsection shows built-in reports on aggregated session data. Clickstream is for built-in reports on aggregated data on user web requests. NetFlow is for reports on net sessions. Subscriber subsection includes data from the NetFlow and Clickstream sections with the ability to create and save custom reports with further detail. Raw logs in each section shows raw data on sessions in the form of a table with maximum flow detail, usually less than aggregated NetFlow reports are stored. In each of the sections, the control panels are the same. Select the period for building the report, DPI device, and select the report on the right sidebar. Let's stop on triggers and alert subsection. Here you can flexibly configure triggers, their period and turn on frequency. One or more reports can be added to each trigger for processing. Triggers can be activated upon one or several conditions, which leads to pre-programmed actions triggering. The last subsection is QoE Administrator. Here you can see subscribers queries processes list. You can get information about the table space content in the table space info menu item in the right column. There is also dictionaries info available. Raw logs for each QoE analytics subsection contain raw data per sessions in the form of a table with maximum flow details. Usually raw logs are stored for a shorter period of time than aggregated NetFlow reports. For each section, the management panels are alike. You just need to select the period of the report, the right Stingray device, and select the report on the right sidebar. The next section of the main menu is VAS Cloud Services. Should we open the Personal Area subsection and look at Account Settings? Here you can view and edit the company's profile, user's profile, change the password, view licenses details. Let's open the VAS Add subsection. Here you can enable the Partner Program Service from VAS Cloud. Just turn on the service, switch in the list download on one or more Stingray devices from Devices List, and earn money with VAS Cloud Partner Programs. And now we are ready to switch to the last section of the main menu called Administrator. Equipment, Users and Roles subsections, that we mentioned earlier, are duplicated here for easier navigation. Such subsections as GUI Server Configuration, Statistics Server, PCRF Module, are located here. They include the module settings, that are organized similarly to the DPI configuration. You can set the parameters by selecting the appropriate section in the configuration menu. For those who do not like using forms there is an editor tab in the top right corner of the page. There are also logs for each module. The next large section is Hardware SSH Terminal. This section allows you connecting to any equipment and running a command as if you were connected to the server via the terminal. For your convenience, the most popular commands are already listed on the right side and are divided by topics. You can select the command and it will appear in a command line by one click. Press execute to run the command. That's about it for today. Thanks for your kind attention. You can find more videos on VAS Experts YouTube channel.